start this important session, the practical session on preventive career education, sharing some experiences uh, developed by Lara's uh, laboratory on preventive career education. Our speakers are Maria Cristina Ginevra and Sara Santilli from this uh, UNIPD laboratory. We have a new member here. So thank you very much again for your availability to share your experience with us. And the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Silvia, and um, good morning to everyone and welcome to this uh, session. Uh, um, Silvia has um, presented, we will focus our attention on some preventive uh, career education programs that we have developed and implemented with um, kindergarten, elementary and middle and high school students in order to support them uh, in planning their educational and professional future. So in the first part of this, uh, of this webinar, I will focus on uh, career development in early childhood and then my colleague Sara Santilli uh, will uh, focus on uh, um, uh, career development uh, during pre-adolescence and adolescence and she will present some uh, educational career programs that can, we be, can be implemented with uh, middle and high school students. Instead I will present an example of um, career education programs that can be implemented with kindergarten, uh, kindergarten students. So I just will start um, introducing you uh, the Larios Laboratory that we represent and we are member uh, of which we are member and just to give some information about the mission of our laboratory. Uh, just Please uh, I'll share my presentation. Do you see? No. Okay. Do you see now? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So um, the laboratory, the Larios Laboratory at, at the University of Padova, it is a, a research and interventional laboratory on career guidance. And our mission, our um, duties are related to three topics or three yeah, topics. The first one is uh, uh, to analyze the uh, variables, the construct that are related to career, uh, career um, guidance uh, from in a, in a um, lifelong perspective, so from uh, early childhood to uh, adulthood. Uh, the second one is related to develop um, qualitative and quantitative instruments to assess career, career construction process for children, adolescents and adults with and without vulnerabilities. And the third one is related to the goal of this, uh, of this webinar, so is to develop, implement and evaluate the effectiveness of career education programs for children, adolescents and adults with and without uh, vulnerabilities. Um, when we talk about vulnerabilities, we are thinking about disability, migration experience, uh, substance dependence and, and, and so on. So now I, I will focus on uh, career development in, uh, in early childhood. And before to present to you the, uh, an example of a career education program that we have developed and implemented, I just uh, would focus your attention on the theoretical framework on which our um, project is based on and some, some uh, um, uh, information about career development in uh, this developmental age. So, in uh, conceptualizing the career development in, uh, in childhood, we need to consider two core uh, issues. The first is that career development is considered a significant area for positive development. A special issue um, of 
the International Journal for Educational and Vocational Guidance in 2015 uh, clearly highlighted that career development is um, strictly related to the other areas of development. So, for example, cognitive, emotional, social, linguistic, physiological, and career development are all related and all contribute to the positive functioning and development of an individual. The second core issue that we need to consider about career development in this developmental age is that career development should be considered as a lifelong process. For example, the life design approach, this is a um, theoretical framework, a paradigm, uh, tend to consider the childhood as a, um, very significant for the career construction process. And as suggested by Artung, children uh, can hone attitudes, beliefs, and competencies for planning a future, can make decisions also related to their career future, can explore self and occupation, and build confidence to shape a future career. So, children, um, based on these theoretical pro promises, uh, several scholars emphasize the need to implement career intervention as soon as possible from early childhood. This career intervention should offer opportunities for all children with and uh, without disabilities or vulnerabilities, so in an inclusive perspective, to envision positive career paths for their future, stimulate an understanding and acquisition of competencies and resources crucial for career planning and contribute to quality of life and psychological well-being. So children should be stimulated to have a cooperative vision of the world of work, to recognize the value of diversity in, uh, in the work of context, and also to acquire democratic values, rights, and responsibilities in order to be the future whistleblowers in the future career for your context. There is another reason, in our opinion, uh, because it is really important to implement career education programs already in this developmental age. The reason is that the research has clearly found that kindergarten children have stereotype knowledge about, about occupation. For example, Trice and Rush, already in 1995, found that preschool children tend to prefer professions that are in line with their gender. And also Howard and Walsh found that their conception of career choices are related to strategies associated with fantasy or magical thinking. So this is the uh, theoretical framework uh, that guided us to develop and to develop and implement our our career education program. Uh, the name, the title, the name of this of uh, this intervention is uh, "They are working, what are doing? First step toward the knowledge of the work of work." Um, this is a specific career education program for kindergarten students. It is composed by 10 sessions. Each session lasts about 35 minutes and can be realized with a small group of children, kindergarten children, about five or, or six. Uh, each session is focused on two different occupations, as you can see in, uh, in this slide. Okay, um, so the first eight meeting meeting are focused on 16 different occupations. The ninth is focused on mother and father's occupation. And in the last one, all professions that are occupations that are previously discussed are then described and represented in the neighborhood in a, where, children, where children live. For each occupation, we have described the action that workers make, the tools that they use, and the workplace where they work. 
as well as the contribution of each of these occupations for the community. We also discuss it with children, the importance of education for to become a worker for in each of these occupations. Um, the importance of education, especially related to the knowledge and the competencies that are needed to um, make, <laughs> they make the job. All the occupation, especially for, it is really important this point, especially for the Italian language. So all occupation were presented using both the male and female terms and also where it were presented the use uh, using um, images or video clips of female and male workers in order to avoid stereotypical beliefs. Each occupation was also presented using uh, both real images and video clips of real workers, men and, uh, men and women, that are, were uh, working and showing to students and showing to children the tools that were, um, were uh, using, the action that were uh, performed, they were performing, and the workplace where they were, were working. So just to give you an example of images that we, we use, but also we use video clips of cartoon that very popular for children just to um, present uh, each, each, each occupation. Um, I just want to give you an example about the first session about this training. Um, we, in, in the first session, I remind you that we focus on two different occupations, North nurse and Sally's person. Um, I show you just an example of cartoons, um, video clips of cartoons that we used to um, present this occupation. And um, a, a, this was a, a possibility, an opportunity to discuss after the video, okay, uh, to discuss with the children about, again, action, tools, workplace for each of these occupations. I'll show you the cartoon, okay? Um, maybe you can, you know, these are... Uh, okay. Do you see? Yes. No. No. Okay. Please give me... Papa Pig. Yes, just a sec. I share my computer and the video. Okay, this is um, a very popular cartoon. Please consider that we are talking about kindergarten children. So we have chosen cartoon for this developmental age. Okay, so for example, this Peppa Pig. Uh, we um, uh, didn't show the entire cartoon, okay, or the entire episode, just uh, um, uh, a piece of, the, of, of it, just a, a clip of the cartoon that was focused on the occupation that was important for us in, in that meeting, okay? For example, in that case, the part starts at... Okay. I should <laughs> How do you feel? I'm not very well, Susie. I have to stay in bed. What can we do to make you better? <clears throat> you could get me some orange juice. Okay. <laughs> Peppa seems to be quite enjoying herself. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. Do you feel any better? A little bit. <clears throat> Daddy? <laughs> Ask my mummy if I could have some ice cream. And Rebecca, could you bring me some flowers from the garden? Dr Brown Bear is here to see if Pepper is better. Ah, good. The nurse is already here. How is the patient? Uh, 
I'm not a real nurse. It's just pretend. I see. Would you like me to... Okay, I, I stop here. This is just an example of actual, and my, you can see also the tools that the nurse used. Um, I just give you another example that is more um, functional about, especially uh, this occupation. Baby bus. <laughs> The cartoon? Okay. Yes, I'll take care of you. Let me check your temperature. Okay, these are just two um, video clips of, yeah, of cartoons that we used to, to present the uh, occupation of NARS. Um, after each video, we discuss it with the children about the tools. So you can you have seen in, a, in the in a two videos about, for example, the thermometer or the blood pressure um, pressure mon monitor and the other tools that the nurse can, can use. We discuss it about the workplace where the nurse uh, works or uh, the action that he or she um, make. Um, about his uh, or occupation. So I, I don't know if you want to see also for the salesperson, but the, the idea, the concept is the same. So we use in this case other two cartoons, Peppa Pig and Beans, that are related specifically to um, shopping. Okay, uh, Peppa Pig uh, buys new sh shoes. Sorry. <laughs> So in these uh, in, uh, in these other two videos, you um, are the, the profession of the salesperson is uh, is uh, represented. Um, I go okay. Um, in this slide, instead, you can see an example uh, of the materials that we used to uh, verify if the children understood. Um, uh, understood the occupation and specifically to verify if they uh, reached the must mastery criterion regarding the correct actions that each occupation, um, of each occupation, the tools and the workplace. For example, you can see here just three different tools and we have children to uh, connect the um, NAS occupation with the correct tools that they use in, in, in their work. I will just present to you instead the ninth uh, meeting in which we discuss it about, uh, uh, we discuss it the, the occupation, the mother's and father's occupation. Before this, this meeting, we discuss it with each parent and we invited 
uh, each product to um, describe, to talk with, uh, to talk with the children about the occupation that may, they make, and also to graphically represent some actions that they make in their work, the tools that they use, and the workplace in where they work. I show you an example of um, the uh, worksheet that was produced by, uh, by two different uh, parents. The first one is a mother. She is a special needs teacher. So in uh, this worksheet, uh, she first of all uh, represented uh, her school. Okay, When she arrived uh, to school with a book uh, full of books and uh, notebooks. Then in uh, here, you can see that um, she helps children to understand the concepts that are discussed in the classroom uh, using the uh, laptop. Also here, uh, she used the blackboard. And um, in the last one, she reads, writes, and checks the homework with the red pen. Instead here, you can see the occupation to another a parent is a father and makes um he's a mechanical designer so he, he's in a, uh, here he's in a, his office and in, a, in a, his office he designed the turbines <laughs> to produce electronicity electron, electronicity uh, then uh, then in the construction site he takes measurements with specific tools in the central he uh, make some controls with the demonometer, and lastly, uh, he installs uh, the turbines using water water power. So we um, each each child uh, during the meeting had uh, these two different worksheets. One related to the uh, is or her mother occupation, the one related to his or mother, his or, or father, his or her father, and which each child we discuss it about um, their parents, his or their parents' children, and this was um, a very good possibility, opportunity to uh, discuss with children and um, about. Um, the action that they, they per, parents perform, the place of their work, the tools that they, uh, they use. And we also discussed about the contribution, um, the contribution of uh, each occupation to the community, but also to the well-being of the, of the family. So, uh, all materials of this training, of this career education program, was recorded on a DVD uh, that was delivered to both parents and teachers, so they could continue to talk about the world of work uh, at school and at home. I just give you some more information about the effectiveness of this uh, career education program. We involved 73 kindergarten children uh, that were randomly assigned to the experimental or the control group. Uh, with each child uh, was uh, before and after the, the intervention was uh, um, inter interview. Uh, yeah, children answered to um, uh, what uh, this occupational knowledge interview and they were invited to describe for each of these occupations, were invited to describe any action, task, or activity that is carried by a person that make that, that job, and also any instrument or tools that are used by, uh, by these, uh, these workers. Um, I just show you some results. So whole analysis that we have conducted show that children who participate in the career education program showed a greater knowledge of action and uh, instrument in all occupation that we uh, consider it, as you can see in all these graphs. And 
Also, and I think that it is a very interesting result, also um, children tend at the end of the training tend to use more words to describe, for example, the action or the tools that these uh, um, workers use or uh, action that they perform. For example, a, a child, uh, when uh, he was invited to describe the mother's job, she is a psychologist, uh, before the training, he answered, I don't know. And after the answer, he, answered, he, 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 he said, she talked with people, reassure people, make people feel better so they can live better. About the firefighter, for example, um, another child before the intervention say they extinguish the fire and then they help someone if she, he is caught or if he's, there is a fire, if the car block in an accident. So you can see that the number of action that are related to the profession or occupation of firefighter is, uh, uh, is um, increased. And also related to the number of uh, tools that are used, for example, from, by the veterinarian, uh, before the training, a child say he or she use bites, and then uh, the, nu the number of instruments, the number of tools that are used. You can see in this answer is, uh, is increased. Um, we also evaluated the social validity of the of the training by involving a group of teachers and parents and both perceived the program uh, in a positive way um, for both the goals of the training. The goals is uh, related to the degree to which the target behaviors are evaluated and also the effect of the training. So the degree at which the outcome of the study are satisfied. So just in conclusion, I, um, with this career education program, I just wanted to draw, draw uh, your attention to the need, the concrete possibility of working in a favor of career development in early childhood. So it is clear, um, in my opinion, that in uh, this developmental age, career uh, professional do not aim at an early identification of, of a school of work career choice rather than promote a positive development useful to prepare children to be our citizen and our workers of the future. So, thank you. And uh, now is uh, my colleague Tan. <laughs> I... Thank you, Cristina. Uh, do you have any question? We, we shift later the question or now? Okay, just to link with the Christina presentation, it's funny because in uh, this last month uh, that I was at home with my kids, that is the kindergarten children, uh, she, when I asked her, Martina, do you want to play with me? She answered, no, mom, I have to finish before a Zoom meeting. So <laughs> it's very important, I think, what Christina said, also in relation with this uh, coronavirus that changed some of our profession. So what is the idea that children are developing about the new world and new world career context? So, now I'm moving uh, from kindergarten to the middle school student. I know that perhaps uh, are a lot of information for you, so if you have any question, please stop me. Usually we uh, we usually did a class at uh, about uh, training at the end of one year of post uh, degree course. So uh, we try to put together. Uh, all the information for you, so uh, in any time you can stop me. The meeting that I want, uh, the training that I want to uh, uh, present and share with you is a career counseling activity with the middle school student. Also, this activity uh, was designed on the basis of the life design paradigm. Um, in very few, few words, uh, what life design suggests to us, to consider that career is a part of the life uh, of a person, of the people. 
So the life design support profession to uh, help students and adults to gather information about job and career. So you have the example of King Garden. So uh, to explore what are the possibilities around them, develop career identity that is not just a work identity, but also consider all the life rules that people could develop during their life. So they are not just in the future the worker, but now perhaps they are also the uh, son, they are also uh, could be in the future be parents and so on. So the different rule of the life and develop career adaptability. Why? Because we know very well our world uh, and our career content that is not more linear, but is very flexible. So uh, people have to uh, move around the changing and we just leave this uh, COVID situation that transform uh, career and works, but also in future, perhaps there are a lot of challenges that we need to handle with the heat. So what is career adaptability? Career adaptability is a set of individual research that help individuals to cope with the development task, to participate in working life and to adapt to unexpected needs related to the change of work, but not only the work and the job condition, also family no, change. So adaptability consists principally in four resources that are the concern for the future, the ability to connect the past with the present, so each one has a past story. So it's the propensity to connect it, the past experience with the present and to positive project toward the future. So create a story with the, pre the past, the present and future are in harmony all with the, the, with the person. Control, that is the tendency to think that the future in part is in part manageable. So even if there are a lot of changing, it's important to not give up, to think that we could prepare some action for the future for our design, our aspiration. Then there is the curiosity, that is the exploration to, uh, the predisposition to explore the environment. So uh, the King Garden activity that uh, uh, Christina showed you is very close to the curiosity, so to acquire more information about the world. And it's very important to talk with the children about the job profession because this is the first step as art and light to develop career adaptability. Self-confidence, that is the self-efficacy about our ability to handle the challenge, the barriers that we can may incur in, uh, in the future. So, we develop on the basis of the career adaptability and life design this career counseling for middle school students. So it's a career counseling activity with a group that was developed in five uh, different steps of two hours. So we have five meetings with a classroom, a middle school classroom of two hours. And in each meeting, uh, we uh, develop uh, a different uh, focus. In the first one was on career interest, in the second one on career values. Then we try to help students to discover the career self, reflection about career story, and at the end we set career goals that the student uh, um, try to achieve in the future. So we use uh, a life design paradigm, but also we use a tool that was developed by Savik Kassedartung, that is my career story interview workbook, and we use it in the class, and also we insert other instruments, our other tools that for us could be support students in reflection about the future and the link with the past and present story. So, in the first meeting, we uh, propose to reflect about interest. Here you can see is in Italian, but there is a list of uh, uh, profession, career activity 
that was developed uh, from a questionnaire that was translated in Italian, but there are a lot in, all, in all the world, you know, the most famous, the all in one, but we not use the profession, but activity. So an example is uh, develop uh, things or uh, try to think uh, how, uh, how make uh, I, I lose myself. How uh, they think uh, work or sell something to the other and so on. So we use this list and we create a, a cars of interest. So, but we not create we ask the children to create. Why? Because in this way children have to cut each interest so they have to read the cut this is an activity this is a behavior and the cognitive activity and after we ask to list the activity for this is a very interesting for me in three groups very interesting not interesting for all and so so is not not interesting and not interest for me after of this, we ask to create categories of the interest. So they were free to create sample of the interest. So they have the list of the interest that they like, and we ask to put together with the interest that they not like, that were not interesting for all for them, and try to put together to create new interests that are not in the original list and then we ask to create different symbols but they were free to create it we don't ask create for uh, specific categories and this is was very impressive for them because usually students in middle school in italy i don't know in the other part of the world are uh, uh, usually work with the uh, schedule that are very fixed. They are not free to put uh, uh, in, a, in a white paper they, their design. So uh, giving them a white paper was impressive. They are not able to use it. And so they use in different way. They put on the uh, white paper they interest and you can see here an example how the student uh, create categories so the, in, in, in this case we have on the left uh, works with the hand so uh, it, it, there are a list of the works with the hand then we have uh, uh, altruism uh, interest so an example is uh, help uh, people that are unhealthy or help people to uh, stay well, or teacher uh, someone to read. Then we have uh, the leisure activity, and uh, an example is uh, uh, talk with the friends or sing with the music. And we also ask to put. Uh, because perhaps some that are very I cannot hear Sarah okay yeah Sorry, <laughs> I lost you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, no, yes. no, no. Okay. Uh, perhaps I uh, touched something that. Okay. So here you have other example how student put together their interest. Then. We work also in the past story of the student. So uh, we ask them uh, about the past. What is, what is your 
uh, your heroine uh, a, a, a person that you estimate uh, what are the adjectives that uh, you could use to describe uh, him or him uh, or her uh, character? Why we ask this question? Because in this way, um, students start to reflect about the people that would, uh, would they like to be. So in the, uh, asking them about uh, the object of the people that, they, uh, that are important for them, we can support them to reflect about what they will be in the future. In the third step, so in this way we work on the value, you know, uh, related to the adjective, uh, we, uh, we can uh, have a list of the value of the people. And so our paper increased because we put together also the value, the work value of students. And at the end, we ask them to think about the subject that they usually study at school and to think how each subject that they study could help them to support them to uh, develop their interest. So in this way, we change the, uh, the motivation to the school. The school is not something that we have to do because the adults say us that we have to go to school, but it is an is a instrument, it's a tool that helps me to develop my interest. And then we, uh, with this big white paper, with the interest, with the value and with the subject that support them to create, uh, to develop their interest, we help students support them to create a future goal. It was not fixed future goal because we are talking with the middle school students, but just to try to think about uh, career path, career profession, the goals, and how they could improve more knowledge about it. So we also uh, try to validate the efficacy of this uh, uh, of this intervention, and we use different measures. We use the career data inventories that is a measure that uh, is translated in different languages so if you are interested i am sure that you can find it on google scholar in your uh, languages and we also use two italian measures to assess uh, the time perspective the resilience the open and the optimist toward the future design a future and prosper so what uh, uh, the, the finding at light that uh, in the experimental group, uh, the level of adaptability uh, was higher at post-test than the control group. Specifically, uh, we, um, we found that uh, there was an increase in concern, in control, in curiosity and confidence in all the uh, in all the 4C uh, of career adaptability. Additional in the experimental group, uh, there was a higher level of hope, resilience, future orientation, and control group. Also, this means that helps students to think about their interests, to clarify, clarify what they really like, help them also to look at the future in the long time perspective, not just no, in related to the uh, next future. And this is very important because help them also to invest in education, in training and so on. So, ah, yes, this, this is fine. I just want to show you a video that uh, is a, a Nike uh, spot, but I, I am not an influencer. I just want to show you because it's very funny and uh, in my opinion in two minutes uh, resume the life design paradigm the life design approach uh, and how we could use it uh, with the kids with the with the student to help them to support them to create a personal uh, future design
Can you hear? No, no, Sarah. Sorry, I have to share with my audio. Listen up, babies. Life's not fair. You get no say in the world you're born into. You don't decide your name. You don't decide where you come from. You don't decide if you have a place to call home or if your whole family has to leave the country. Yeah, it's messed up. You don't decide how the world judges a person like you. You don't decide how your story begins, but you do get to decide how it ends. Yes! So, and with the life design paradigm, we uh, try to do this, to help people to to help people too to we are sorry <laughs> we, we help uh, students to try a new hand to their story so sometimes they they know what they they like as christina said in relation to some stereotypes to some uh, uh, also families and but we need to help students to focus on their desire and also change the end of their life. That is not what the family wants or what the teacher wants, what they would like to be in the future. So now I am showing with you another presentation that uh, related to an intervention uh, focus on uh, um, High school student. Can you hear me? Okay. And uh, uh, this intervention that I just show you uh, was developed, uh, I think, about around uh, uh, five years ago. So during these five years in our laboratory, we reflect a lot how to support students in this world that. Uh, is continuing changing. So also our theoretical framework was changed during the uh, during the year. So uh, this training is uh, related to the new uh, reflection that uh, as group we did in the in the last year. Always we uh, we have the uh, life design paradigm in mind, but we go a little over considering also the uh, challenge of a sustainable future. So, I'm showing you the slide. Okay. Uh, why we uh, go over with the life design and we also uh, try to think in an inclusive way because you know the treat the challenges are a lot and also in Italy we uh, we reflect about the increasing inequality the polarization of wealth of work the immigration rates the dignity of human rights the profitization of precarious employment the idea that to stay in the work context we need to compete with the other so we try to think about these challenges, also in relation with the fourth industrial revolution, uh, the robot apocalypse, how some author call, and also in relation with all the change that the digital device are making to some specific work. Uh, I can see you, but uh, you can see me. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> and uh, 
we we just see the challenge with the with the COVID that uh, uh, increase the transformation of some work that uh, are now in smart condition or that are in the wise way. So what's happening for the students that are now in education? Uh, thinking about the future, because we don't really know what's happening for the future, for the career of the work. So, in our opinion, it could be important to consider the uh, Sustainable Development Goals Agenda. Also because uh, there are different challenges that uh, in all the world we need to uh, look and to handle with, uh, with them. Specifically, what vocational guidance, uh, in, in which way vocational guidance, career education could support this changing world. So, uh, in, uh, in our group, we really think that we need uh, to develop the idea of an inclusive, sustainable vision of social context. So, perhaps for the high school student, could be very important to reflect on the present context and really know what is happening around the world, so increase their vision, not only just focus on themselves, but also consider it the other, uh, not only the Italy context, but also consider it the world context. So what I'm doing here in this moment could affect in some way what are doing other people in another place of the world. So in this case, uh, we uh, create a theoretical paradigm that uh, in, uh, in which is very important the inclusive a uh, sustainable attitude of the people. So it's very important the relationship between individuals, their interests, but also the context in which people and which students are starting to design their, their future. So we uh, create a big, big project uh, that include workshop instruments and laboratory to, develop, to help students in this, in this way. So we create a new measure, new measure because we think that it's not just possible to ask or to analyze the interest of the student, but also we need to, um, to assess the propensity of them to sustainability how much they know about the right, the dignity of work, the decent work. So in this way, um, we uh, did a big effort to uh, create uh, some different measures. And uh, we also uh, assess other dimensions that we could use also in the past, such, uh, such as empathy, curiosity, reflect, reflection. And just to give you an idea, I want to show the, uh, the instrument that we, we use. So we ask to students and to high school students to answer to this uh, protocol. And uh, uh, was in an online way, and uh, in the first part we talk about the career counseling. What is the career counseling activity? And then we ask some demographic information, also related about the thing that they have on their future, and then we ask some information about they or. Sorry. Okay. Sara, Sara, sorry. Is this in Italian or in English? Because we can. We, I personally don't know the others. I can't read it very well. So if it is in, in Italian, it doesn't matter. Yes. You can explain. Yes, it's in Italian. It's just okay. Give to you the the idea okay. that there okay. are a lot of, uh, of questions that are uh, different. Okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, um, 
with this idea. So the idea is to move toward the sustainability thinking. At the end of the assessment, um, in the first step, we also give them a personalized, a personalized report. Also, the report was a huge report uh, because we give them a feedback about the propensity that they feel to think on the future, also consider the, all the uh, 70 um, goals of the Agenda 20 and 30. And uh, uh, we give them a personalized report related to the time perspective, to the hope about the future. And at the end of the report, we ask them to think about their personalized agenda of the future. So consider your strength, because it's not a clinical intervention, but it's a career intervention, career education. So we emphasize their strengths. What is the agenda? that you could uh, science now start to write for your future. So what is for you uh, the goal of the Agenda 2030 that is very important to achieve? So this is a first step, a first kind of intervention, but uh, also this is a very, in, um, in, it's very personalized, but the student could work in this way, in individual way. So we can could prepare the classroom, the students are with the computer or uh, with the teacher that is prepared to manage the classroom with the measure, but also we develop a training in the classroom with the, uh, around 15, 20 students for group. On the same topics. So, just you give the idea of the uh, the training. Um, Show you the slide. Sorry. We uh, try to create a different action to help them to uh, to look in the future but it's a very long way because we start in the first uh, also here are five uh, five session of two hours in the first one we ask them to consider the uh, the five uh, challenges that the un uh, UN propose for the future, so the people, the planet, prosperity, peace and partnership. And we ask them in the future, which is the challenges that for you is very important to handle with it in the work and educational context. And then we try to move from the challenges to the goal. I give you an example. So in the first meeting, you can see, it's in Italian, but just to show you the, the material. In the first section, we introduce them what is the career education. That is the definition that I think that we share. Career education is not just a questionnaire with the interest and match your interest with the future job or future education partner. Career education is something different, it's something that helps students to think about the present, the context, and then design the future in relation to aspiration, to the wishes, to the sign of the future. So, uh, first of all, we clear the definition of career education because this step is very important, because uh, uh, we would like that people are very present in our intervention. So, then we introduce the five P of the challenges of ONU and then we ask them, thinking about these challenges, what are the tasks, the behavior that you could do with leisure activity, educational path or work that could help to help with these challenges? And then for each of them, we ask 
to the student how of uh, each uh, P, sorry, I <laughs> the P could be important for themselves, for the peers, for the teacher, for the uh, parents, uh, for the political, and so on. This is also very important for us because we want that uh, student go out from their personal perspective, but also consider that they are in a group. They live with the family, they live with the parents. There is a micro, a meso, and a macro context. In the second unit, uh, we uh, consider the uh, goal uh, of the Agenda 2030. So we ask students to uh, we talk with them about the agenda. And we ask to consider each goal. So. We read with them each goal of the Agenda 2030 and then we have to reflect on each goal with a new measure that we develop that helps students to think on each goal and to assess it on a link scale from 1 to 5. How much is important for you to example the first item in the future, we will uh, we will do a lot to uh, a, a, a rich uh, a, a equity distribution of the rich. So, how is important for you this? For uh, in uh, educational point of view, for your future uh, career and uh, educational training choice. And then we ask also to think about uh, this goal and about the goal that they assess with uh, the maximum value and also to think about the importance of education and training to achieve this goal. These goals are not a little goal, are very important. We are talking about poverty, we are talking about pollution, so it's impossible to achieve this goal alone. We need to create a group, so a farm, okay? So we, we, uh, we start to still this kind of thinking in the student. And in the third meeting, uh, we uh, start to uh, put together the emergency that uh, for them were very important with the goal. In this way, so we use uh, some material like this. So thinking about the emergency that uh, for you is important. Why this emergency is very important for you? A link with the emergency with the goal, but we just not ask one single goal, but more than one, one, two, three, because it's important to create possibility that just to force a precise choice, because we are talking with the high school students. In this way, we move forward the fourth and the fifth uh, section in which students were supported to create their personal agenda, or we uh, call it mission possible. We uh, help them to do this, giving information about uh, different missions that could start in the future, related to the health, related to the, um, to the planet, and so on. To give them information about the career that are related, which is mission, but the information are different from the past because we have not the Holland model, but in each mission we can find all the Holland interests. An example, if we are thinking about health, it's just not, not physician in the health profession, but we need an example of the engineer because we have a lot, a lot of data but there is also the social profession, the creative, and so on. So each profession and each mission is presented related to all the online interests. And this helps students to think 
also about the colleagues that could support them in the future to achieve the personal mission. So this is the idea. The idea in this last intervention was to look to the future. In fact, the name is looking to the future, but not the next future. So what I could do in the university or in career context, but the future now with the, with the data that we have now could be very challenging. So we present these challenges and then we go back to the goal, that the goal is very also you know, long term. And then we go back to their interest, their, their career, but not also they, also looking to the other in an inclusive way. So this is our last uh, uh, intervention and uh, for us it was also a challenge because uh, uh, we create uh, a, a total different you know, the start of point of the other intervention. And uh, also here, we uh, just to give you some Oh, see, yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot to show you. This is uh, also the, uh, the schedule related to the mission possible. So uh, we, we ask them to consider professional activity, uh, the training course that could prepare them uh, to the skill to achieve that mission. So in this way, we also move toward the university. So we present them all the uh, program that are presented in uh, in our university and uh, we ask them to consider it uh, not just in relation to the label the label of the course but thinking about the disciplinary that are interesting for them and also looking in a multidisciplinary way because we know that to create a future citizenship that are that pay attention to inclusion and to sustainability we need to create a diverse uh, skills that are very multidisciplinary one so also to test this intervention we involve a group of participants 92 high school students and we split in experimental and control group and we assess, we use some measure to assess their wishes about the future, but also the, so here the career adaptability, the investment in the future and the investment in education. As you can see uh, from the graphic, our results highlight that there was an increase in, in career adaptability in pre-test and post-test in experimental group than control group, but also increase the propensity to feel responsibly, the concern about day one future. Also the investment in education increase and also the wishes about their future were uh, more uh, sustainable, in which way? Because they pay more attention uh, to the other than just not to themselves. And this for us was a very important goal of our intervention. And also the satisfaction with the career in intervention was, was good. And this uh, helped us also to think a different way to intervention to propose in the school and to put together the career education with the sustainability topic and inclusion that is very important to create uh, uh, the future university students. So we, uh, if you want to create a change in the future, I think that we start with the culture and the culture for, uh, for us means to help students to reflect uh, about the context, about the present, about uh, what is going around us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah and Christina, for this, I think, really uh, <clears throat> clear, but also exciting presentations, because they really represent a clear example of what preventive career education can do and how uh, it can have an impact on the development 
of people. <clears throat> as you say, career development should start from the very beginning and should be seen as a lifelong learning process, accompanying the person all along their, uh, their life. So I would uh, like to share with you uh, just a reflection. I take some notes during your presentation. And um, the reflection is this. I would like also to have the opinion from the colleagues from the other universities. So starting from this point, preventive career education as the basis as an essential instrument to support the development of people, persons, young, uh, how can universities uh, with their different um, people uh, and uh, resources can contribute on that? And it is clear in my mind that, for example, research groups as your uh, are essential in the universities and your work is, is, is uh, excellent and you work also in the territory in the schools. So, of course, having research groups like yours in the university could be one point. But another one, I was thinking about this and I would like to have your opinion on that, is, for example, um, to work on degree courses with a focus on preventive career education. As you said just a minute ago, uh, we should start from a changing of culture. But how can we do that if we don't uh, start from the education? So if we don't prepare people to work on this, uh, because we need people going to the schools, to the kindergarten, to the primary school, to the secondary school, up to the university to start this process. So we need prepared people and maybe universities and we as Articles Alliance maybe should reflect on that, uh, we could work uh, in this direction. Uh, we are not a research group but we are university and we could give our contribution preparing people at the university level to be ready to work in this field. This is of course my opinion but I would like to have yours. Another possibility could be to add some specific um, units within the degree courses already existing. So for example, within the education in general, so all the degree courses both at master and master level preparing teachers, because also teachers has, uh, have an essential role in the education of uh, um, students from the primary to the secondary and higher school and so on. And what else? I don't know, but I think it would be nice to share with the colleagues what, as Arcus Alliance, uh, uh, we could do in this direction. Otherwise, this change of culture uh, maybe would be more difficult than it is. Thank you very much. That's been very interesting. Thank you, Silvia. <clears throat> I don't know if you have any question or class. Um, I just wanted to um, use the opportunity to say hello to everyone. Um, I am a professor from Perkin Education at Graz University. So currently serving as the head of department for the Institute for, or Department for Education Research and Teacher Education. Um, so I was very excited about <laughs> most of the um, um, presentations and I would like to congratulate you on your um, excellent research from Graz's perspective. And now I'm more here like as the head of department thinking who would, could be good partners. <laughs> Um, who would be good partners for you. I think one of the challenges, and I think you possibly discussed that already, is that career orientation is such a cross-sectional topic. <laughs> um, so very much more than relevant and implemented in the social sciences. And in, in, in Austria, and especially in Graz, we have this situation that we are for university is responsible for the teacher education program and this career guidance and teacher training in that regard. Um, this is not one of the um, missions <laughs> of Graz University, but the people at the Pädagogischen Hochschulen, um, our colleagues were traditionally 
um, experts for that they are responsible. What we do have at Graz University is that, um, that we train school psychologists <laughs> um, um, in sort of being, um, being overall responsible managers, <laughs> coordinators for these types of activities and being trained and um, being trained sort of to supervise and overview career guidance within schools, career guidance within schools. And there in, um, in their teacher training, they have a specific module on career orientation. So, um, and as far as I know, they also work empirically. So they might be, um, they might be the, right, <laughs> um, the right partners because they're really much, so if there's someone who's responsible for that, I, I would feel, I would feel it would be those. Um, then possibly the colleague from the different subject specific didactics with their perspective might be relevant colleagues. And we do have quite a nice international center for elementary pedagogy, um, elementary education. So um, I think career guidance has not been on their focus, but maybe they might be um, might be open for new topics. <laughs> um, and I think they have experience in similar intervention, in similar intervention studies. So this is if like there's a mission to really improve something and have a good match in what we are doing at Graz University, that would be nice. But of course, um, another thing um, that we could always offer from our institute side, I'm involved in international comparative studies of student achievement. I don't know if you are aware that especially the Tim study on Grade eight also has some very nice indicators on career guidance and activities schools and um, um, schools are doing and also career paths and orientation and studying gender differences in that regard, more like using macro level data. I think um, on that, um, this is also something maybe where um, there were people to sort of want to analyze um, this type of data and maybe to get a more comprehensive comparative view on what's on the different context and systems. I think that would be um, also something which we would have colleagues at our institute to do, but um, then there would be more sort of looking into um, systemic, um, systemic approaches in that um, in that regard, so this is um, so this is where I see <laughs> um, this is where I see options and um, options and possibilities sort of to really um, dig further and to really have an impact on either on the research side or really reaching the practice. To me, it sounds um, yeah. So these are the different um, sort of the. Um, the the different of inspirations <laughs> I had and thinking about um, and um, and thinking about how to make collaboration concrete in our um, regard. I think it's very important and exciting um, what you're doing. So um, yeah, so looking forward, and I think also it's very important, but also this big challenge in where to find the right. You have this nice center, <laughs> and if university don't have this nice um, centers which are combining expertise and really finding um, 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 finding the right match in that regard. Thank you, thank you, Professor Bent, and thank you for uh, being here. Uh, I'm very happy to see so many people from Graz uh, because actually one of the issues that we have in ARCUS in general, but uh, with this um, task force maybe in particular, because actually it is one of the most challenging probably of our 13 sub-actions in Action Line 2, widening access, inclusion and diversity, is that of having uh, expert uh, people within the task force collaborating, uh, contributing, uh, to actually uh, create the model uh, we have in mind and we have to develop as an output of this sub-action. So it would be great 
uh, and I would be very thankful as I'm sorry, I'm, I didn't introduce myself. I'm chair of Action Line 2 uh, here at Padova. And um, I would be really grateful to you if you could think about uh, joining the task force and on, on a constant basis. And if you cannot personally maybe try to uh, engage the, the people you were mentioning uh, a few minutes ago that you think could actually actively contribute to the um, construction, the co-construction of this um, final model and uh, tools that we have to produce at the end by uh, September 2022. Um, do you think that the idea Silvia Preciso mentioned of, uh, um, for example, in our model, introducing the idea of having at least a unit, if not a whole course at university level in each of our universities related to um, vocational guidance, uh, career um, development, uh, life design and, and career counseling would be a good idea and we could uh, introduce it as a, as a topic for the future because uh, you maybe know that uh, in Arcus we are trying to develop something which is not existing and uh, uh, which is uh, meant to be um, a proposal not only in Arcus, not only for the alliances uh, which already exist, but also for the future alliances which uh, will come uh, uh, progressively and will be more and more present in Europe uh, uh, according to what the European Commission wants. Um, so, do you think it would be a good idea to uh, think about uh, at least a unit uh, within uh, our education um, uh, or teaching training courses? Well, my understanding is there is this module in the sort of which is an extracurricular study for further qualifying as a school psychologist. They already have a module which exactly is on that. Mm -hmm. Then what is, might be possible to have an elective course in the general teacher um, education program in offering that as an elective course um, alongside a lot of other elective, <laughs> um, elective courses. Then just from the architecture of teacher education in Austria, the university itself is not responsible for in-service training. So we are only responsible for the initial teacher training and there the curricula are quite tight, as you know, bringing in the different subjects and the expertise in that regard. And um, so traditionally, this is an, a topic in Austria for initial teacher training and for this then um, the Pädagogischen Hochschulen are responsible. So the only thing I would consider being reasonable <laughs> um, would be really reasonable um, to claim is maybe in the initial teacher education to offer, it would be a, what is it, a three ECTS credit course as an elective um, as, as an elective alongside other electives. That's what I think currently from um, what I know how these the curricular structures which might be something which might be reasonable, um, reasonable to do. And there's a lot of governance issues around the questions on for various things we would be would maybe like to make also offerings for in-service teacher training, but this is politically not wanted. So I don't think this is <laughs> that now for, for this topic, <laughs> this would change the whole governance structure um, of how teacher education is um, organized. This is something what maybe might be something to explore and I'll um, discuss this with the colleague from the, um, from the early education. They have a specialized program um, for elementary um, elementary school teachers. So they, um, I don't know how they, together with the people who, who are becoming social workers. Um, so there, there might be an opportunity, but, um, um, but this, I think that um, they would need to be discussed and explored. I'm not so much aware of, I'm not so much aware of what the, um, yeah, um, what the options are there. 
However, the curricula are getting revised for the teacher education, I think, over the next one and a half or two years. So I think it's um, also, I think what God's university may be able to promise to uh, mention this as a topic, <laughs> at, even in the curricula, so that there would be opportunities to really offer electives in that regard in the initial teacher training. Mm -hmm. That to me sounds, um, that to me sounds realistic, given the fact that these traditional in-service training courses are really something which our partner universities, they have expertise and they offer, um, um, they also offer specialized training courses over several semesters. I strategically, um, I, would, I would not feel that this would be something where now um, University of Graz would make many friends and saying now we are opening a new center and this is our new topic <laughs> um, that is in our corporation structures. And I think that we need to get a little bit of a different framing so that it sounds it's something um, much more innovative than was traditional career guidance. This is because I, I think this is what you can understand if you sort of have to work with four institutions and then you at a certain point you've said this is what we are working on and this is our expertise mm -hmm. and this is what <laughs> you are working on it's our expertise this is also a little bit sometimes political to do mm -hmm. um, however they are not very much on they're traditionally doing the training and not the research <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so if and I see you have a strong focus on intervention studies and I think on this like and think we can make context to that professor from the um, pedagogical psychology who does similar studies and who's also um, as a, a recognized expert or also who um, um, claims she's an expert in that area who might be a good, um, who might be a good person I'm sure if um, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Maria Cristina, Sara, um, I remember that it, within the European network you have um, uh, vocational counseling, uni uh, universities engaged in the um, vocational gui uh, guidance and counseling uh, studies and application and so on. You have, um, I remember, some Austrian uh, partners or universities included. That, that might be also interesting, as I was saying sometimes in our board meetings, maybe to find out, maybe we could send you some um, uh, a link where you can find the list of the universities in, involved in this network and it could be nice to uh, if we carry on with this uh, idea that we are now <laughs> trying to build uh, to uh, also see what they do and and um, it's very similar uh, to what uh, of course there are different experiences but the frameworks the the the, the the methodologies, the, um, I mean, they are really sharing good practices in, in the network. Maybe you can tell us more, Sara or Maria Cristina, about the network. Maria Cristina is more involved in science. So. <laughs> can I ask you to say a few words about the network? Yes, we are involved in um, uh, different network really um, international they are uh, I'm thinking about for example an European association um, is a name ESBBC European Association for uh, Career Counseling and Career Guidance I don't remember in this moment the name of the um, group of um, uh, of Austria I, I really don't remember but I, I can check and uh, if you are interested in, I, I can share with you the name of the uh, scholars that are part of this of this group. I'm sorry. There is another uh, international network. Uh, its name is Unitwin. Um, it depends of uh, uh, from UNESCO, 
and we are really interested to work together as scholars in, uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Europe uh, to uh, support uh, decent work um, in, uh, in uh, Europe for individuals with and without uh, vulnerabilities. So um, our research and our intervention activities are focused on uh, lab design and um, decent work. Yeah, may, there are other uh, international associations that involve also uh, European scholars. So if you if you want, I we can share with you this uh, information. So in each country, really, because uh, uh, each European country is involved in all these uh, networks, associations. So I can share with you this information. So if you want, you can uh, um, start. Uh, collaboration within your country with the person that are that work with us in, uh, in uh, this field. What about we have Bill News? Do you want to yes. add anything? Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, really, for your useful and very necessary presentations for us. As I mentioned, when we were in Padua, that Vilnius University has teacher training, teacher education. So we have teacher education for programs from, from kindergartens and uh, until, until secondary education. So we see similarities between uh, between your ideas uh, and our ideas, and we we think that we can create uh, create uh, career development programs for primary school schools or for secondary schools, and it can be involved in uh, study courses in teacher education or we also have a um, professional development center for teachers so we can create and uh, uh, courses for teacher for teachers who are working at schools and uh, they at this case we, we they can just develop their competences uh, in can career education so we I, I, I see similarities and we can create uh, and we can think about the creation of common model for career development. So, so, so we are open for, for your ideas and thank you for your presentations. It was very useful for us. Thank you. It's perfect for us. Any other comments? Well, uh, I, I have a, um, an enthusiastic comment about all, of course, all the, um, the, 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 the experiences you showed us, the programs, the applications, the research behind them and so on. But I'm really astonished, I mean, really uh, enthusiastic, especially about the last one, because I didn't know at all uh, the last one, because the, I think it's very recent, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I, I think it, it's incredible because um, it, it kind of uh, conjugates at the same time um, uh, vocational guidance and uh, career counseling or career um, development program for the people who participate. But at the same time, even without noticing you, that you, the person who participates, uh, actually acquires mm, um, a view, mm, uh, knowledge opens up to uh, an inclusive state of mind and to um, um, a, a shift which is fundamental from the individual perspective to the collective, the global, the world perspective which is what uh, actually is, uh, as you said, is particularly needed in this uh, um, era that we are crossing through. It is particularly needed in ARCUS uh, and for all uh, uh, the activities in Action Line 2. It is particularly needed uh, anywhere. I mean, in the job uh, place, uh, in, the, in personal lives, uh, in 
in, in our relationships in, as human beings. And I, I, I think it is really part of that human development uh, vision that we are trying to establish uh, a lot also in Arcus, for example, starting with the, the foundations, which are our uh, three charters for uh, sustainability, inclusion, and gender equality, which are more um, related to the political vision, to the mission. And, and this is a real application of that uh, vision and, and that mission. And I, I think it's really great. I mean, it's really innovative and uh, I don't know if there are similar experiences, and you probably have searched through similar experiences, maybe in the US or uh, in Australia, elsewhere. I don't know. You have a huge network, international network uh, of uh, people working at similar things. I don't know if you know of similar experiences, but I, I think it's a really um, something. I mean, you are obviously, you have to be proud of, and we are very proud of being. Uh, at Padova University and having such a group working in such, in such a, a way with such, with a framework like that. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> it is exactly for what you just said that I, I really personally think that universities have the responsibility to find the right way to uh, uh, how can I say, to practice, let me use this word, preventive career education. Otherwise, the risk is to welcome uh, university students who didn't have any opportunity to reflect. And this also have an impact on their uh, academic success, but most of all on their life. So this is really a responsibility of the university. We cannot say that this is not exactly our job, but as universities, as education, higher education institution, we need to think how to uh, start from the kindergarten. Um, maybe the means are, can be different. Uh, I'm, I do not know which they are, but we should find uh, some issues, uh, some, uh, some instruments, and this is an example, an excellent example, but uh, it needs to become some bigger, so much more spread and some uh, and uh, used within uh, the education at all levels. So hope that this is for us starting point and an example to take very clearly in mind to be to be practiced uh, all around. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to Maria Cristina Ginevra, to Sara Santilli, to all of you for this participation. The meeting has been recorded. We will have a check on that, and then it will be available for uh, all the people in the Arcus network who could be interested in. Thank you very much. Have a nice meal. Good lunch. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Ciao. Have a nice day. Thank Ciao. You. Ciao. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye.